So maybe you're thinking about becoming scuba certified or you're already certified. The big question to you is, how am I gonna be able to breathe underwater or how was I able to breathe underwater using a air delivery system, better known as a self-contained underwater breathing apparatus? I'm gonna talk about it, stick with me. Hi folks, Bob Collins for Diver Supply. If you're new here, please reach down and hit the subscribe button. We really appreciate you folks when you subscribe. And of course, we appreciate everybody that watches. I was out on the sales floor just yesterday. I met a couple from Tennessee that said they watched the videos, really enjoyed it. Good luck on your trip and have great fun down there in Bonaire, guys. And I also met a public safety diver that we had a nice discussion about high pressure tanks, low pressure tanks, benefits, things like that. So again, if you have comments, post them back down below. All right, so let's talk a little bit about what happens with an air delivery system. Now, the tank, this is our high pressure air, 3000 PSI, and this air is gonna come out of the tank through the valve into the first stage. Now, I'm gonna put a diagram up on the screen of what a normal diaphragm style first stage looks like. And this is also a uh, diaphragm style first stage. This one actually has a turret added to it, but it's, it's so similar that it won't make any real difference. The air comes out at 3000 PSI, goes into our first stage, and in the first stage, it is broken into two separate chambers. Now, let me warn everybody, what I'm gonna be talking to you about, please don't go out and take your equipment apart and look inside of it unless you're trained to handle the equipment and train to put it back together properly, all right? Only somebody that is trained to open up this life support equipment should be doing that. So please don't, don't go and open your, your equipment up. Just take my word for it. If you wanna do some additional research on YouTube and on the internet, please do so. But what happens in here is there's two chambers. One's a high pressure chamber. One's a intermediate chamber. Some people mistakenly call it low pressure. And off of the high pressure chamber, we have the hose that we're able to check the pressure that is in our tank. Now, there's a seat that opens up in here and it transfers and reduces that high pressure air into that intermediate pressure and that intermediate pressure, you'll notice these three hoses right here, our inflator hose, our primary regulator hose or primary second stage, our alternate air source second stage, better known many times as an octo, these are actually intermediate pressure coming down these hoses. Now, what do I mean by intermediate pressure? Okay, so high pressure, intermediate pressure, and what's here on the front, pushing on the front, or the pressure that surrounds us when we're scuba diving is called ambient pressure. Now, if we stand up and our head's out of the water and we're standing in atmosphere, that's one atmosphere, that's our ambient pressure. As we drop down, we get to 33 feet, we have two atmospheres, then the ambient pressure pushing against the front diaphragm of the second stage is ambient pressure, or that would be basically 30 PSI if I round 14.7 to 15. And that's why I've got these weights sitting out here. We're gonna talk about that in just a minute. All the new first stages, 
they're called balance first stages. And what I mean by that is that this high pressure at 3000 PSI comes into the first stages. And some of the older first stages, they were set so that this intermediate pressure was basically about 120, 130 PSI that came down these hoses. And that didn't change. Now, as regulators move forward in their design, they became, most of them became what we call balanced. In other words, there is the ability for, for this first stage here to sense the depth that you are at. And also it senses the ambient pressure that you're at. So as you go down, it senses that increase in ambient pressure. And to help balance that, there is the ability of this first stage to raise this intermediate pressure coming down these hoses so that once it reaches the second stage, it's at a little higher level. Now, why would we do that? Well, here's the reason why. So if you're breathing off of this and the ambient pressure here is increased now to two atmospheres or 30 PSI, coming off this 120 or 130, then mm, it's not that big a deal. But once we drop down from 30 to 60, now three atmosphere or 45 PSI, now we drop from 60 to 90, now it's four atmospheres or now it's 60 PSI. And of course, you if you went down to the maximum of the recreational limit down around 130, then you're talking five atmospheres, okay? So it's considerably more as you add that ambient pressure that you're breathing off of. So in that 60 or that 75, compared to that 120, now you're pulling off about half of that pressure and it makes it a little bit more difficult to breathe off of. What we're able to do with the balanced first stage is that it senses that elevation of the ambient pressure and it will actually raise that intermediate pressure maybe up to 140, 150, 160, 170, maybe even up to 180. And now you're taking the 60 off of 180 versus the 60 or 75 off the 120. There's a considerable amount of difference in the ability to breathe off of the second stage. So that's the beauty of a balanced first stage. Now, let's talk a little bit about the second stage. And what I've got here is I've got an old second stage. It doesn't have a mouthpiece on it. And I'm just going to talk about the major parts and pieces here. So this is our cover, our purge cover. This one actually has a little button on the front as a, as a purge button. Here's where we breathe off of. We'd have our mouthpiece, we'd be breathing here. And of course, here's our vents. Now, again, I warn you, please don't go taking your second stages apart. Just believe me, this sort of thing is in there. So I'm gonna take my purge cover off. And again, this has got holes in it. You can kind of see through there. And the water flows through there. And there is a rubber dam, rubber diaphragm in here that separates the water from the air that you're gonna be breathing from. And I'm actually gonna pull that out. There's our rubber diaphragm that separates it. There's a little metal plate in here. And what that metal plate does, it pushes against a lever in here that actuates the seat to open this little valve in here to allow air to come in that goes down your windpipe, down your, down your throat. And so it senses, the diaphragm senses that ambient pressure pushing on it, whether it's 14, 30, 
45, 60, 70, whatever it happens to be, it senses that pressure. And as you suck in, it provides, it opens the seat and it provides the air to you at the matching ambient pressure. So again, if we have a situation where as we start going down, now all of a sudden we start adding ambient pressure on the water side, then what that valve and what the regulator is doing is it is adjusting the flow of air to you, giving you the matching ambient pressure so that you can equalize. Works pretty good. We can thank, uh, you know, Jacques Cousteau and Mr. Gagon for, for all this wonderful equipment and designing the underwater uh, breathing apparatus or better known as SCUBA. And uh, we're gonna talk a little bit more about equalizing in a separate video. But I appreciate you guys watching this short video about how an air delivery system works. They're all basically the same. And you know, there's piston designs, there's diaphragm designs, there's one with fancy second stages, there's side breathers, but the concept is all the same. High pressure, intermediate pressure, ambient pressure, and that's how you dive underwater and you equalize down there. So as we always say here at Diver Supply, dive safe out there. Thanks for watching. And had shopped in our, and now my phone's ringing.